After I had successfully sprouted beet seeds in early spring using a makeshift cold frame, I decided to move it into a different spot to jumpstart the growth of some beans. Beans should only be planted after all danger of frost is passed, as they tend to die once temperatures grow near or below freezing. I wanted to plant them a couple of weeks sooner than I would normally be comfortable planting them, so I could hopefully get a sooner harvest. I chose a spot close to the house I had previously ground tomatoes in, but had decided to plant something else this year to practice a bit of crop rotation. I had a rough trellis made of rustic twigs, electrical conduit, and wire in place, so I decided to fit the cold frame box around it without having to remove it. Sometimes I just like to complicate things. The soil was covered with dried stems and mulch from last year's tomato crop. Some ground ivy had taken over in spots, growing with abandon during winter. I just had to yank them out a bit using a tool to dislodge the roots so they would hopefully just wither in place, adding to the mulch. I wanted to lessen competition against the fragile bean plantlets that were yet to grow. Without my intervention, the weeds would just take over and smother everything. I was growing a new variety of pole beans called Old Homestead. It was purported to be a high-yielding heirloom variety, sure to produce abundantly and certainly be worth its salt. I also had some old seeds of scarlet runner beans and yard-long beans I just wanted to use up, so I made sure to throw them into the ground, not expecting much from them, frankly. I was planting beans not only because I do like to eat fresh string beans when summer arrives, but also because beans are beneficial plants to rotate around the garden. Beans are known for improving soil fertility as they host more nitrogen fixing bacteria in their root nodules. That means they can grow in otherwise impoverished soil. I also planted some seeds outside the cold frame to see if having the cold frame over them in the first weeks would actually make any appreciable difference in terms of germination time. Since those two spots were side by side, receiving essentially the same exterior climate conditions and soil types, any differences in germination would indicate an advantage or disadvantage from the enclosed environment of the cold frame. Either higher temperature or more humid conditions would be the reason for any seeds germinating sooner. I usually tend to accumulate seeds over time, and some of them start getting old and unviable. I decided to just throw in some of the old bean seeds from a couple of years ago and give them one final chance to either grow or return to the soil. One bean variety I like planting is the Scarlet Runner Bean, even though they turn out more as a decorative vine than a useful one. Their beautiful, large, reddish-purple seeds are very delicious when cooked up in a soup especially when recently harvested. I cover the cold frame with its glass lid and let it do its magic. I would soon find out if all my effort was worth the trouble. Coming up in the next block, will my cold frame experiment yield better results right after this commercial? If you enjoy the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop or become a patron in my Patreon. About two weeks later, as the weather turned for the better, I went checking on the beans. The experiment really has worked. I see several of the beans sprouted and I don't see any over there. So I think this really did its job. But it's time to retire it because the weather has been warming up and I don't want the beans to cook there. I am afraid that the groundhog might get to it before it, it's big enough to actually start climbing the trellis, but you know, you gotta take your chances. Experimenting is key to gardening. That is the only way we learn new approaches. It certainly is easier to just rely on tried and true dogma, and there are good reasons for doing so. When you are a marker gardener, for instance, who must meet a certain expected quota of production, experimenting with your entire livelihood is not a very bright idea. But even so, it is in pushing the boundaries of what is known where creativity resides. I suppose some people are more naturally curious than others, and some prefer to rely on established guidelines in general. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. I like to try different ways of approaching a problem. Sometimes I fail miserably. Other times I find unlikely solutions I respond to with glee. In this case, growing plants earlier than usual is a great way to push out more produce in a small piece of land. I saw that cold frames really help boost germination in the first colder months of the year. However, my cold frame design may still be a crude one and should go through revisions as time passes by. Discovery is not just about making groundbreaking, never before seen revelations or inventions. It is also about adapting what is already known out there to your situation and tweaking the factors to make the system more productive and useful for you. In this case I like that the cold frame forced the beans into early germination through a thick mulch layer. That meant my ground would spend less time there, which I always look for. As the weather reached higher and higher peaks and a short dry spell took hold over a couple of weeks, I had to water the young bean seeds a couple of times. This tender stage is when they are most accessible to drying out, and having come out of the cold frame's more humid microclimate, I had to keep an eye on them so they would transition without much stress. I usually try to water as little as possible, and most of the time I don't have to water at all. We are lucky to live in a place with good rainfall. As soon as I had grass tall enough to mow, I started to collect grass clippings to use as a layer of mulch, adding a thin strata every week or so. This fresh green grass is full of nitrogen and certainly boosts the foliar growth of plants, while also providing cover to trap moisture closer to the plant's root zone. It makes good use of an otherwise wasted resource. When I realized that I could trap most of the clippings using the mower bag, that motivated me to go cut the lawn. It seemed like less of a waste of time then. Transforming negatives into positives is what permaculture is all about. There is a clear difference between the ones, the beans that were grown under glass first and the ones who weren't, even though they were put in the ground on the same day. So that extra warmth help them to sprout about two weeks earlier and that gives them a, a slight boost. Now I don't know if that's gonna actually mean that I'm gonna have beans first here, we'll see, but that's my hope. In this case the vigorous growth of the cold frame batch was enough to sell me on the idea. As days rolled by the vines started to cling tenaciously looking for places to climb. It was almost as if they knew that by grabbing onto higher ground they would be safe from the groundhog. The beans are really trying to grab onto life and get to high ground. They've tried over here and I think they've been slipping. You can see evidence of coiling and then going down. I think it might have finally been able to get to a place where it can hold on to because these, these types of um, galvanized metal materials uh, will tend to be very slippery for a bean. They prefer a tree trunk so I think I need to give it a helping hand just to get it to start climbing and once it does then it's gonna fill up this trellis. I do want to put some string around um, from what, this place to that place and that's the thing that I'll have to do annually but it's easy later on in the season to just cut it and have it cleaned up. The goal is to create a matrix of support for the beans to climb so they can have as much surface areas to capture solar energy. It does make sense to expect that a bean will be a better climber of natural materials like twigs and branches. That is what they were designed for. They have a bit of a raspy texture to their vines that I imagine aids in them grabbing a foothold to weave their way up. The galvanized electrical conduit is great to use in the garden because it is extremely durable, but their sleek surface is not ideal and they do look a bit too shiny for my taste. I prefer to hide them over with plants and other natural materials. Iron rebars would be much better, but they are too heavy and much more expensive. A few weeks later, the bean vines were thriving. They were loving their new supports and appreciated their bed of grass clipping mulch. They were pumping out new leaves each time bigger and bigger. A steady and sometimes excessive new pattern of rainfall did take hold, allowing for the plants to grow more and more. Through the years I have noticed that plants first put energy in developing good root systems so you don't see too much top growth in the first weeks. 
After that, there is a growth spurt of leaves that are now able to be fed by the roots. In that stage, plants collect as much solar energy with their leaves, giving them strength to continue on to their next step. Only when a thick covering of leaves is established will plants start flowering and fruit production. My beans were producing the largest leaves I had ever seen on a bean vine. They were massive and dark green looking. It most definitely was the grass clipping mulch doing the trick. New shoots were popping up all over and production seemed promising. Some people may say that too much nitrogen may produce large leaves and not enough flowering and fruit, but I was skeptical. Would my vines produce lots of beans or would I just be fooled by the verdant growth? You will find out in the next episode. See you there.